Okay, this is self video one on the formulation of policy proposals. A policy proposal is developing pertinent and acceptable proposed courses of action for dealing with public problems. People may have to com compete to get these proposals into place or devise their own alternatives. There are three options that can be used with policy proposals. Legislators can try to work it out, leave it alone, or be unable to agree and push it to the side. Awareness of a particular issue or policy doesn't guarantee action, but unawareness ensures inaction. This means that to have a public policy take place, you need to make sure that you make people aware of it and make it known and really push your issue and stress how important it is. A vast pool of ideas has already previously been developed that people can use in order to devise where their policy proposals come from and maybe help with some of the terminology or idea stems. More likely when a policy proposal happens, it's only gonna make incremental change rather than radical change. Occasionally radical change does occur, but it is much more difficult and more likely for incremental change because people are more willing to adjust to it. There are several factors that will affect the change that public policy will have on particular issues. You need to make sure that the proposal is technically sound, that people will understand where it's coming from and it makes sense to them. Um, you need to also make sure that the budget costs are reasonable or acceptable. So this means that the budget needs to be there and there must be enough money allocated in order for the policy to go through and not leave the country in economic downturn. Um, it also must be politically acceptable. Political parties must accept of it, and it must be a policy that people can adapt to and agree with. And if to be politically acceptable, it also needs to be acceptable to the public, especially if it becomes law. So people must be for this purpose and want it to happen, especially if it becomes law, because then they are going to have to follow it. There are many different parties that are involved in policy proposals, and in this chapter of Anderson, it focuses on who is involved at the national level. The first is the initiative, which is the president along with the executive office of the president, and these are the people that present the policy recommendations to Congress and really come up with the basic idea of what, is, what policies should be changed or implemented. Another group involved is governmental agencies. Um, they're the ones that become aware of new problems and deficiencies in existing laws in specialized areas, for example, like healthcare or um, even like Homeland Security. So they know the specifics in specialized areas, what's going on. So the plans that the president comes up with are sent to the, from the executive to Congress, to these governmental agencies. Rather, the government agencies give the ideas to the executive branch who then forwards it to Congress. And they are very important because they have this hand-on experience and specialization in their field. Another group is presidential organizations, also called adhocracies, and they study particular areas and develop policy proposals. So for example, commissions, task forces, and other arrangements. Um, commissions, for example, do not always produce recommendations preferred by the appointer, but they kind of come up with their own ideas of how they feel the policy proposal should look. Um, and if there are issues with certain committees, other committees can be assigned to investigate those committees and see what research they're doing and how it affects them. Um, and the goal of a task force is to be innovative and imaginative and to come up with brand new ideas and working together from different um, fields. Another group is the legislators, where they receive suggestions for actions on problems and formulate proposed courses of actions. So the legislators are those in Congress. Most of the drafting is handled, though, by congressional staff because of their resequent knowledge and it is their job to worry about the details and bargain the legislative details. Another group is interest groups who go to the legislator with specific proposals for legislation. 
They work with the executive and legislative officials and play, and however they will play larger roles in the state level, they also play a role in the national level and they can be formulators. They draw on experience from other governments from other countries and use that in order to decide what they feel is the best course of action. Policy formulation can be viewed as a technical process. So there are two main activities that make up this technical process. The first is what if anything should be done about a problem? So answer specific questions about the policy being addressed and get to the nitty gritty of what is really gonna compose of this new policy. The second activity is rules must be drafted that will carry agreed upon principles into effect. So you need to make sure that these new policies tie into existing statutes and have to be written skillfully because people will look for loopholes and try to get through the proposals that you make. And because of this, you will need clarity and phrasing and intent and provide clear guidance. So the Congress especially will use billing drafting services to make sure that what they're saying is being clearly addressed in the most specific way possible so loopholes can be avoided. Another aspect to the rules being drafted is that judges, once the policy is in place, will interpret by examining, either examining legislative history, which is taking what has been decided in the past and basing their decision on that, while others think that the better way for judges to do this is to interpret the text using their own knowledge and making their own decisions rather than basing it on something that's happened in the past. So another thing the book talked about that I thought was really um, cool to see and really helped connect all the ideas that we learned within this part of the chapter was a case study on the Affordable Care Act and talked about how since World War II, medical care, the idea that medical care should be provided to everyone was proposed by President Truman. And ever since then, they've really been trying to get medical care provided by for everyone. And it was only till 2010 that this was finally implemented. So it just shows how long a policy process really takes to uphold. And that there was many steps along the way that had to happen in order for it to succeed. So eventually some leeway was made with the Johnson administration when Medicare and Medicaid were passed and provided to help the elderly and help those with certain um, disabilities and others such as veterans be able to have medical care. And it also became a major um, political issue in the 1992 campaign where like they thought at that point that it might get passed, but various plans were crafted and introduced to Congress under the Clinton organization. And it was very back and forth where like they were looking for those votes to make sure they could um, pass it through, but there were too many strongly opposed from the outside organizations. So those such as um, the governmental agencies and the interest groups were not for um, medical care for the national level. And because of their influence, it failed to reach the floor of Congress because they tried to talk to different congressional leaders about it. But the interest groups were like, no, we don't want this policy. So it was really interesting to see how it affected our history so recently. Um, Eventually, even though with the failed attempts, Obama finally succeeded in health care reform in 2010, but it didn't come easily. There was um, a lot of people that were still like on the cusp and really didn't want health care to pass, and it passed by a very narrow margin. But something that Obama did differently than others before him was that he let Congress handle most of the details of the health care plan and just gave them some goals to kind of follow by. So I thought that was good in letting Congress like kind of branch out and get their own opinions in there and kind of like a task force in a way, like being innovative and creative. So with this section, it really talked about the policy proposals. And I felt like I learned that there are, it's not just something simple, like one person decides that the president's like, oh, I want this policy, Congress is going to vote on it, and then it's going to become a law. It's more like very political in that people have to discuss certain things and agreements have to be made. So my two discussion questions for this section that can be discussed are, 
Should justices use their own judgment or legislative history, which is a constant debate because many justices use legislative history and make their decisions based on that, while others believe they should make their own decisions. So do you th which way do you think and why? The second discussion question is, do you think most drafting of policy should be handled by congressional staff or should those in Congress do the drafting themselves? A big problem could be misinterpretation misinterpretation within the wording. So should the congressional leaders worry about that or should it still be left to the job of the congressional staff because of their experience? Thanks for watching and see you in class.